We are very excited to have Neha Narkede join us here today. She is the CTO of Confluence and the co-creator of Apache Kafka. Neha, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It would be wonderful if you could tell us a little bit about your incredible journey and specifically talk to us a little bit about how you have found mentors in an industry where there are very few women. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, you know, pretty sure that you will find this familiar. You know, my parents really encouraged me from a very early age uh, that you can do whatever you set your mind to. And they did specifically this one thing, which is uh, they curated books of uh, women leaders and mm -hmm. they curated stories of women leaders, like uh, Indira Gandhi, first female prime minister of the country, uh, Kiran Bedi, uh, Indra Nui. And uh, they sort of, uh, you know, helped me look up to these uh, ceiling crashers. Right. And somewhere down the line, uh, I now realize that all of that was sort of building a kind of confidence and, and persistence and grit to sort of, uh, you know, break some ceilings and, and set a new example. So, uh, you know, early on in my life, role models played a much bigger part uh, than mentors. And now I'm uh, pretty, you know, lucky to have mentors uh, also in my career, like Padma Shri Warrior and, and so on and so forth. So I've been fortunate, I must say. That's fabulous. In fact, we often find that there are many women who are keen to go and build their role models and mentors in an industry. What advice would you have for women in tech, women engineers to actually go and go from being wanting a few mentors to actually having a meaningful relationship with a few mentors in the industry? You know, the, uh, the advice I give is um, to avoid formalizing the mentorship relationship a mm -hmm. lot. Uh, and the reason I say that is because uh, I found a lot of value in uh, learning something from people in just a very short amount of time. Okay. Uh, so I focus a lot on uh, questions that I ask people who inspire me. And you'd be surprised, uh, you know, what you can learn from someone by just spending an hour with them. So, uh, you know, the advice I give is sort of uh, be keen on uh, reaching out to people who you find inspiring and ask them questions. You'd be surprised how many of them uh, respond to your request and actually give you time. Over time, some of those relationships uh, grow to a point where uh, that's the first person you call when you have a problem or when you want advice. So uh, I would say, you know, ask questions, uh, lots of them. That's a great piece of advice because we often find uh, during the discussions we have that not many people put themselves out there. Um, and more often than not, if you don't have the conversations, you won't build the right mentors. That's great advice. What are the top three challenges you find women engineers face in the workplace? Uh, so unfortunately, you know, the path is quite hard for uh, minorities in technology and I'm pretty sure other industries as well. And so when I uh, try to think of something hard to do, I, uh, I try to study the space, right? Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's much more important to know your challenges, to be able to overcome them. And so, uh, you know, sharing my experience a little bit in, in technology, I've had to work probably 2x harder than my male counterparts to get the same thing. Sure. I've had to ask for every promotion that I've received in my career. Uh, and uh, I think that's a little bit because uh, we all are conditioned uh, socially to place a lot of value uh, on a man's potential mm -hmm. and uh, place uh, a lot of importance on uh, a woman's track record rather than potential, right? And so it plays out in many small and, and large ways where you get held back uh, by bias and, and opportunities. But the only real way of, uh, you know, uh, making progress is powering through and um, one advice I do give uh, minorities of all kinds when they do work in technology is to develop the grit mm -hmm. uh, to break through these ceilings and, and work really hard until uh, we all become role models uh, so that this doesn't have to be like this in the future. Specifically, what are some of the tangible things women can do to develop grit? Uh, this is some, holding themselves back is something most women struggle with. So some tactical advice would be great. Yeah, I think the first thing is be prepared to hear no. A lot of us hold back uh, questions and, and uh, requests because we are concerned about being turned down. Yeah. Um, and the second thing is develop the persistence and the grit to power through the no, get it to a yes. Uh, but the third and most important thing that uh, I've personally followed is to fail fast. Uh, assume first, if you hit a ceiling that it's a glass one, try to break it. Uh, but if it turns out to be a concrete one, then just move on. I hear that 50% of the management team at Confluent is women. That's fabulous. That's probably exemplary for most uh, tech companies globally. How do you ensure that 
role modeling and mentoring is done differently at Confluent? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, I'm personally really proud of the fact that we've been able to build such a leadership team that has 50% women. Almost any of the enterprise companies uh, have not been able to do that. But uh, the change it leads to is both small and large. You know, we have a lot of focus on developing an environment of inclusion and equality, which if you think about the main factors that affect diversity in a company, are creating an environment of inclusion. But the second thing is that it helps you affect change from the very top. And that I'm a big believer in that, which is if you need to change the status quo, it needs to start at the top. It needs to then flow from there onwards, right? And so um, having 50% women on our management team has lent uh, all of us a voice at mm -hmm. the very top of the company for uh, problems that are pretty unique to us. And, um, example. you know, for example, there are things um, like the discipline around reviewing uh, incentives and uh, promotion opportunities mm -hmm. and uh, reviewing how equally they are uh, handed out uh, to creating a culture of, uh, you know, inclusion where all voices are heard. Even simple things like if, in, if there's a meeting and if there are women engineers or minorities in the meeting, to pause the others and ask, do you have something to say uh, and share? Those are little things that, uh, you know, constitute the culture and we've been very fortunate to attract such people at Confluent thus far. Fabulous. Any final words of advice for women in leadership positions in tech so that they can spread the change? I still think uh, we need to still develop the grit and the persistence mm -hmm. to continue being in the industry. Mm -hmm. Because a, a, a big problem that we have is not so much a pipeline problem, but a leak in the pipeline problem. So if all of us persist and stay long in the industry, we all become role models. And automatically, it has a pretty big impact on the next generation of women who enter. Fabulous. Neha, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you for having me, Anjana.